What you're about to see isn't science fiction. It's a real machine designed for one thing only, transporting tons of cocaine without being seen. What you're looking at is a narco submarine built deep in the jungle with no access to industrial tech or shipyards, but with a single purpose, to dodge radar, cross invisible borders, and deliver its cargo thousands of kilometers away. In the past decade, over 200 of these vessels have been intercepted, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. For everyone that's caught, many more succeed. And what you're about to discover isn't just a catalog of illegal watercraft, it's a real lesson in hidden engineering. Every year, authorities in the US and Europe seize hundreds of tons of cocaine, but many more slip through. For the cartels, transport is a high-stakes game, and they're constantly coming up with new ways to move without being detected. That's how narco submarines were born. At first, they were crude, meant only for short trips. But in recent years, their designs have become sophisticated enough to cross the Atlantic Ocean. Today, we're going to look at four of the most representative models, from the simplest to the most advanced, and see how they work, how they avoid detection, and how law enforcement tries to stop them. We'll start with the most common model, the low-profile submarine. These began appearing in the late 2000s and are still in use today. They're about 14 meters long, and although they're called submarines, they don't fully submerge. They're built to keep just a small portion above the surface, just enough to let air reach the diesel engine. The rest blends in with the sea. Their shape and color make them extremely hard to spot, even with radar. Inside, five men travel under extreme conditions, the space is divided into three compartments. At the back, the engine. In the middle, a tiny cabin where the crew sleeps, cramped together. No windows, no real ventilation, no toilet. And at the front, the cargo. Over seven tons of cocaine, tightly packed. The load is so heavy, it actually helps the sub stay just barely afloat, nearly invisible. In one documented mission, this type of sub was headed for Central America, cruising at about 16 kilometers per hour. But a patrol plane spotted it and immediately alerted the U.S. Coast Guard. Two fast boats and a helicopter launched into action. When they reached the vessel, agents banged on the hatch. They had to move fast. These subs have an emergency system a valve that floods the boat to sink it, destroying all evidence. But this time, it wasn't fast enough. The five crew members were captured, along with cargo valued at over $200 million. But that's just the basic level. The next model is a much more ambitious evolution, the transatlantic narco submarine. This kind of vessel departs from deep inside the Amazon in Brazil and travels more than 12,000 kilometers to Europe. One of them was nicknamed CH. It was over 20 meters long and carried three men, a Spanish ex-boxer turned captain and two Ecuadorian crew members. They had no GPS, just a compass to guide them. Conditions were brutal, no beds, plastic bags as toilets. Food was limited to rice, canned sardines, and energy bars. Half the sub was taken up by three massive tanks holding 20,000 liters of diesel, enough to power the engine through the nearly four-week journey. 
It was built to cruise slowly at around 19 kilometers per hour, staying under the radar and avoiding all contact. During the trip, they faced storms, nearly collided with another ship, and failed twice in attempts to deliver the cargo mid-sea. When they finally ran out of fuel, the captain tried to contact old friends in Galicia, Spain, to help unload the shipment, but nothing worked. They made the call to sink the submarine near the coast and escape on foot. What they didn't know is that authorities were already watching. Using night vision, they tracked them from land. The two Ecuadorians were arrested shortly after the sinking, and days later, the captain too, hiding in an abandoned house. When the submarine was recovered, they found three tons of cocaine, worth over $100 million. The mission failed, but it revealed something important. The cartels aren't just trying to cross borders anymore. They're crossing oceans. When traditional methods are no longer enough, the solution is to become invisible. That's how the Snorkel sub was born. Unlike the low-profile models, this one can submerge almost entirely. The only part visible is a narrow tube sticking out of the water, the snorkel. It allows air to ventilate the inside, keeps the diesel engine cool, and supplies oxygen for the crew. It looks like a military submarine, but it's built with far more basic materials. No naval steel, just fiberglass, wood, plastics, and yet it works. This model is 24 meters long and can carry up to eight tons of cocaine. Inside, while still cramped, the builders included a small sink and a rudimentary toilet. For narco standards, that's considered luxury. But the most impressive part is how it evades detection. This type of sub has a camera mounted on the snorkel giving the crew a clear view of their surroundings without ever surfacing. With that, they can avoid patrols far more precisely. And here's the most chilling fact. To this day, not a single one of these snorkel subs has ever been caught at sea. Every known case was found on land, which can only mean one thing, they're working. In November 2020, deep in the Colombian jungle, authorities found something that looked as straight out of a sci-fi movie, a fully functional electric submarine. No diesel engine, no fuel tanks. Instead, 10 tons of batteries powering two silent electric motors. This machine could travel up to 60 kilometers at a steady five kilometers per hour. Not much, but that wasn't its purpose. This submarine was designed to be towed. At the front, it had a towing ring that let it latch onto a larger vessel, a cargo ship, a fishing boat, anything, and be dragged thousands of kilometers without using a single drop of power. Then, once near the delivery zone, it detached and finished the trip on its own, completely silent. The fact that only one has ever been found tells you something. This model wasn't a failed prototype. It's a working system, highly effective. And chances are, there are several more out there right now moving through routes we haven't even discovered. These submarines aren't built in labs or shipyards. They're born in the jungle, along remote rivers, far from any signs of law enforcement. And yet, the complexity of their design rivals that of professional engineers. Behind each one is a brilliant mind. They're known as master builders, skilled craftsmen who understand physics, mechanics, and materials better than many degree holders. 
With limited resources, they create vessels capable of crossing oceans. Each of them leaves a signature in their designs, the way a hatch is built, how the weight is distributed, or how the electrical system is laid out. And while few have ever been identified, one stands above the rest. His name is Oscar Moreno Ricardo. Colombian authorities called him the king of semi-submersibles. For years, he was the mind behind several vessels captured in international operations. His shipyards were so deep in the jungle that not even satellites could easily spot them. Finally, in 2022, he was arrested in a joint operation between Colombia and the United States. His capture was a major victory, but not the end, because when one falls, another rises. And somewhere, right now, a new genius is designing the next submarine. Smaller, faster, more efficient, and even harder to detect. Most of these submarines are built for one trip only. Once the mission is complete, they're sunk. They remain as metallic skeletons on the ocean floor. But as long as the drug market exists, new vessels will keep appearing. Faster, quieter, harder to find. And in this silent war beneath the waves, we're still far from winning. If you understand, this isn't just about drugs, but about systems, strategy, and engineering, then Enigmaze is your channel. Subscribe and get ready to see the world differently.